to the Philip show. Hey, Barbara. Hey, Philip. Hey, welcome back. So for you guys who do not know, Barbara Clark Ruiz is the creative director and CEO of B-Swirl Inc., as well as the founder of Lick You Silly Premium <laughs> Pet Products. Barbara, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I'm here with you, so life is good. <laughs> well, I'm going to grab my coffee. I just want the people to know this is from our friends at Miami Valley Pottery. And I, I've been drinking out of this mug all month because it makes me feel like a Viking. Wow, that's an awesome mug. Isn't it? Look at this. And they, yeah. they, they show me where they make it, and they, I don't know the words, they kiln it. Kiln, yes. Yeah. You put it in the kiln to, yeah. to, to make the, uh, the um, what do you call it? Not the dough. What am I to, what clay. Am I to, the clay? The clay. The, the clay. Okay. <laughs> I feel very biblical with this. You know, I just feel like this is Jesus would have drank out of this. Wow, that's awesome. You can you can get a lot of beer in that. Listen. So, all right, so Barbara, I uh, I'm super excited. Last time you were here, we were talking about this wonderful um, product that you're now giving to the world. Well, not giving, but you understand. You're 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 bringing the vision to life with uh, Lick You Silly. How is that going? It's going incredibly well. I I just feel so blessed, you know. Um, you know, after we got voted best dog treat in Cosmo, uh, you know, my chest got pumped up just a little bit, like higher. Like, oh my God, that's just incredibly amazing. Uh, like when you just think about, you know, this, I, I just had this idea that I want to start a dog treat brand and, you know, and just to go through the steps and implement it. And I just want to encourage any entrepreneurs out there that if you have a vision, don't even listen to that noise that's in your head because there's going to be noise. I really just want you to listen to your heart and let your heart be your guide. Let your heart and your wisdom be your guide because God put it there for a reason. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, so it's going really well. Like we sold out of Amazon a couple of times. Like I hate that, but you know, we are just trying to get the, uh, you know, the capital that we need in order to grow and, you know, and I'm just trying to get creative. I'm like, do I do an Indiegogo, you know, to be able to make some capital? Like, I'm not even sure, but you know, I do know that we have an awesome product that people love and I'm just, uh, I'm just grateful for it. And this little, this little baby right here, these are my, my babies. <laughs> so if you are that that is wonderful. So if y'all don't know, um, and you have to go back and watch the original interview, and that is so exciting because Barbara and I sat down and she told me all about Lick You Silly. We're in Yellow Springs, and this is Pride Month. It is June, and it's Pride Month. So being a part of Pride, we also in Yellow Springs just opened our dog park in collaboration with Wagtown. When she told me about Lick You Silly, I was like, I'm just gonna throw it out there. You know, she's a guest on the show. I'm just gonna throw it out there and ask her, would she like to partner with YS Pride and um, and our YS Pets Got Pride contest? And guess what? She said yes. <laughs> so we're excited. We have we have three different prizes. We got the baskets. Barbara, they're pretty. Do you mind if I show a quick video of it? Uh, yeah, please do. It was a lot of work to put in those baskets, but I, I just wanted it to be really, I wanted it to be perfect. I wanted it to be really nice for the winners. So let me show you all these beautiful baskets that she handmade with, I mean, just love and goodness. <laughs> goodness tell me about why you feel lick you silly is becoming like the best unkept secret in a phenomenon right now I, I I truly believe that um it's our product you know I mean obviously there's a there's a, there's other freeze dry you know beef liver chicken liver brands out there but the quality of our product it is it you know it's the best 
it's, it's the best beef and chicken, you know, that we could find on the market. And, you know, the primary parts of the animals being sold to better grocery stores like your Whole Foods and your Wegmans. And so we know what a steak tastes like that comes from a Whole Foods versus what it might taste like coming from your, your average grocery store. We also know that there's a premium price that you pay, you know, at a Whole Foods. But it's like when you buy a piece of fruit from Whole, Whole Foods, you expect for it to be delicious. Right. And look, and let me tell you, Whole Foods is so expensive that I remember one time I bought grapes from them that were not good, and I literally complained. I returned them. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna need to get my money back. And I would That's never the use that. The grapes at the grocery store, but there's such a high expectation when you buy from Whole Paycheck. It needs to be delicious, and so I really believe that it's a testament to our quality and. And I really feel like in my heart that people know that there's just so much of me in this. Like I put my I put my everything into growing this brand and I I I feel really happy giving it to my own dogs and you know and I feel I'm so I'm just so filled with you know joy when people come to me and they're like, Oh my god, your product is so amazing. Like, you know, my dog's a picky eater or you know, I was trying to find a product that a dog would actually listen to me and doing tricks and it's your product, you know, and it, it just I just think that it's a testament to the quality and um, and of course, our customer service is amazing because mm -hmm. you know, I love to surprise my partners. I mean, my, my customers when when I ship products, sometimes I, I throw in extras for them. Like, who does that? Nobody yeah. does that. So I'll throw in like an extra bag of treats for them just just because, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for each and every one of my customers. And I have one customer today. I, she placed an order with me and I, I can see that she's she's literally bought 18. She's placed 18 orders with me. Wow. And I'm like, wow, I'm so I'm I'm just I'm so grateful that, you know, I've been able to, you know, get this product and the company is working with me as a startup and. And, you know, and I put those little hearts inside every single one of my my orders. Um, and it's just a little bit of me that goes along with to every one of my customers. That is amazing. Yeah, I love the personal the personal touch, you know, because um, it mirrors the feeling that you get when you're kind of around your dog. You know, it's a very I don't want to use the word intimate, but it's kind of like an intimate moment. Yeah. You know, it's very organic and, and, and non-artificial. And I love that because it just it's like a caring minute. It's like, oh, somebody cared enough to throw this in here. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. And there's a I I get I put a handwritten note in every single one of my orders. Not the ones on Amazon, obviously, because Amazon ships those, but if you order from our website, there's definitely a handwritten note that comes from me. Being in business for so long and being so successful in, in your ventures, what is one of the, would you say, maybe one of the hurdles that you're finding launching this particular business, or are you? I think the hurdle would be just having adequate capital, you know, because um, I'm like, you know, God, I want to I want to be able to get sell 10 bags of treats on Amazon. And I'm like, oh, my God. So there are days that we sell 15 and 20 bags of treats which is amazing, um, but it really is just having the capital that I can keep, you know, I can keep up with all of the orders and and actually have a, a huge surplus there. Because um, mm -hmm. Amazon is actually, since we have such great customer reviews and customer service, that they can say to us that we can have, you know, a thousand bags there if we want to. And so that's my goal for July is that I'm going to get a thousand bags shipped to Amazon. We're never going to sell out ever, ever, ever again. And, you know, and it's just, I think the toughest part is just having the capital. And then because it's so much competition, like how do you make yourself stand out? You know, and I think, um, you know, I think there's also a movement where people really want to su support small businesses, particularly black owned businesses. And I feel like, you know, I certainly check all those boxes. Um, but it it's it's been a challenge just trying to figure out like where is my niche, you know? Yes. And we're actually now in the top zero point zero three percent of brands that are on that are sold on uh, Amazon. Wow! Well, congrats, congrats. Yeah. That's huge. Yes, yeah. you you, uh, you just mentioned something. I want to kind of talk about the business aspect of it a little bit because sometimes people have the misconception that when you sell on Amazon, you're just giving them permission to do it, and then they package all the stuff, they manufacture, they do all that. But what you're saying is they can only sell what you send them. 
Yes. Yeah, so Amazon will give us an indication. Okay. So first of all, we are actually we are we are a branded product on Amazon. So you know, are we trademarked it? We tra trademarked our brand, and so Amazon is saying that no one else can sell our product on Amazon except us. Because mm. there's a lot of resellers. So like, you can go out and you can you know buy a box of Kleenex. Anybody can sell a box of Kleenex on Amazon, right? Even though it's like a branded product, it's a huge conglomerate. But with my brand, my smaller brand, you have to get permission from me to sell my product gotcha. on Amazon, which is great because then I can actually control you know where my profits are, are going right yeah um, but in any event amazon will tell us how many bags we need to send to them gotcha. and and you know they're like at minimum this is the minimum amount of bags that you need to send it and you need to send it by this date so we get all of that product together and we ship it to amazon and then mm -hmm. we have to wait for it to be cleared in and so that it's available um, yeah, I think that that is a huge, a huge point because, you know, you um, being the entrepreneur and, you know, people looking at you and saying, hey, I want to do this too. There are nuances, not just to the creative side, but to the business side that you have to understand. You had mentioned capital and a lot of people just don't, I'm just going to sell it on Amazon, but you still have to have like the capital in order to send them things. Yeah, yeah. And we just put, we, we don't take any money out from the business. We just put the money back into the business. And yeah. we try to find different, different ways. Like, you know, the commercial is one of the things that we've been able to, to accomplish, which is pretty huge because the company that we are buying the television time from, they're actually giving us the price that they're giving us because they believe in this brand, wow. which is a true testament, you know, to, to the work I've done and, and, you know, all of these amazing customers that I have. And, and, you know, and that's where, you know, most of you'll be in a minute that we're going to talk to her about this new commercial that, you know, that we, we, we we're planning and we're putting together. Um, but I, I mean, I, I, Amazon is a powerful platform and the way that I learned to sell on it is I just took a course and it, and I just literally went step by step. Yeah. And because of my background, in building, you know, divisions and, and creating new product for brands. Like that's my sweet spot. That's my wheelhouse. And I love doing that. And I yeah. love the challenge of doing that. And so when I saw like, yeah, there's all these dog treat brands, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to create a dog treat brand. <laughs> I love dogs. And I said, if I can, if I can marry, you know, some, some beautiful packaging, some packaging that's going to make it stand out on the market on the shelf, marry it with an incredible product and i'm like i feel like i've got a winner yeah and, uh and i and i feel like i've done that and i go I've, I've managed to do that through god's <laughs> grace i've managed to do it you mentioned um you mentioned marketing um and making your brand stand out one of the things that i know that your brand does stand out in is the fact of course the visuals are really cute but you've given the brand personality mm-hmm you know so it's not just uh it's not just a dog brand it's a very specific kind of persona it's this particular you, you have the mascot you have all these things so it has its own individuality in that way and i know coming up with creative though, and most is going to join us in a minute now when she joins us we'll talk about your um your commercial but when you're looking at trying to be creative how do you start off and say i think i want to go this way do you pull your team together do you sketch it out how does that work I, I spend a lot of time doing research online and, uh, you know, mostly is great because she and I, we, our creative process are very much the same. Oh, perfect. When, when mostly writes, mostly writes on post-it notes or like she writes on a notebook. And it's funny because when I do designs for my clients, I pull out a pen and paper first. Mm. And, then I, and then it goes to, to the digital platform, but I just got to get it through my hands first before I, I can really feel like what I'm putting, you know, what I'm, what I'm going to be executing, you know, in Adobe Illustrator is not going to feel right to me. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so interesting. So, I, so, so she and I both, we spent a lot of time like on YouTube, just looking at commercials. And I always think about what is this, what is a Super Bowl commercial? Mm -hmm. You know, you don't see that Super Bowl commercial. It's memorable. 
And I just want it to be something that's memorable. And I feel like with a brand that's called Nikki Silly, there's so much room for that. Yeah. Like there's nothing serious about this brand. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Including me. There's nothing serious about this brand. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that I'm serious about my business, but you know, I wanted to, you know, being a pet owner is all about fun. Like it, it, I mean, you get to your pet knows you it, it and it will lick your face regardless of, of the fact that you forgot to feed him at lunchtime you know yes. it's just it's just it's a very special relationship that we have with our animals and so you know i really want to somehow depict that in a video that's going to speak to speak to the spirit of people and to let them know how much love and love and care that's gone into building this brand and building this product and I want to be able to put that in film. I, I, it's always like, how do I tell that story and tell it in a memorable way? Well, let's talk to one of the people that is on that journey with you to put that into film and kind of create the scenario. Let's let's join, um, well, let's join in, I guess. Uh, Mosi Singleton, a creative, a writer, a producer. Mosi, let's see, let me get you in here. <laughs> hey family, how are you? Hey Rosie. <laughs> how are you doing? I, I, I'm doing okay. I'm hanging in there. You know, we're still in this COVID life, but you know, maybe yeah, we're, we're hanging on though. Making, we're hanging on. We're hanging on. Well, listen, I was sitting here talking to Barbara and we were talking about being creative. She was talking about the commercial that you guys are wa working on, um, the marketing of it, coming up with the story. Now that is definitely up your alley. How much have you done when it comes to kind of working on stories and what is your partnership like with Barbara? So, you know, uh, it, it's, it's very rare that you have like a synergy with, with someone, you know, but from the moment that um, Barbara and I met, we had a synergy. Um, part of it can probably be because we also are uh, sorority sisters, <laughs> and uh, and we had, right, house. and so we, yes, yes, <laughs> um, and you know, and ironically, we were the same number online, and this, so there's just like a number of things that are unusual connectors between the two of us. Um, and from the very first time that we met we literally huddled in a corner and talked and that has been how our relationship has been ever since we met and that's got to yeah. be now probably over 10 years at this point wow. um and so you know when mm -hmm, and so when when you know barbara was um kind of trying to like you know figure out okay which direction am i going i want to start doing you know commercials with the, with the brand and she had um you know tapped a few other folks to to you know kind of um present some things to her but then it wasn't in the wheelhouse it wasn't in her wheelhouse of what she wanted and so then eventually you know um it was kind of like an abrupt thing where she was like listen to me like it literally happened like she got something back eight o'clock in the morning she calls me she's on the phone with the publicist she's it like i need to turn around like by 12 o'clock and i was just like <laughs> Yeah, oh, it was it was super early. Let's just say I hadn't been up yet and had tea, you know. What I mean? So I wasn't I wasn't functioning yet, and so literally she was like, "I need you to get up like right now." And I was like, "I'm thinking somebody died, somebody something." And she's like, "No." And so she begins to tell me what's going on, and she's like, "I need this turned around quickly because I have to get it over for this, uh, you know, this spot for um, the puppy bowl on Animal Planet." And I'm like, "Okay." So I literally say to her unbeknownst to me whether or not I could actually push it out. Although I say to myself, so as someone who's come from live television, you know, I worked on 106 and Park for quite some time, I am used to being in the pressure cooker. So mm -hmm. I understand what it means to be able to turn something around and you've got production happening and this has to get the Chiron and everything and you've got seconds to do this before the red phone rings and the president is like, okay, what's <laughs> happening? You know, what I mean? so I was like, oh, so, so you're gonna just put me in the pressure cooker? Okay, so then this is like the true test of skills as to whether or not I could actually like pump this puppy out. You yeah. know, no pun intended. So I turn around and I right. So I turn around and I say, okay, fine, I'm gonna do it. I said, give me an hour in ten minutes. Give me an hour is what I said. An hour and ten minutes. I turn this thing around. I get on the phone with uh, Barbara and the um, publicist, and I just read it straight from the moment. I, I barely finished the last word. She's like, that's it. That's the commercial. That's exactly what I want. And I was like, 
okay, good. So I'm like, so then we all, the three of us together begin to work to cut this down to the 30 second. I think it had to be even like t- tighter than that, like a 28 second spot. Yeah, and so yeah. we work together to begin to turn this whole thing around. And so literally we did that, I want to say maybe in the course of 30 minutes. And then after we did that, I, I did the two scratch tests for it. She sent it out. And then before you knew it, literally within like 24 hours, we had the commercial. Yeah. Wow. And that was really how it went. Yeah. That's yeah. Went. Well, okay, but let me let me just back up a little bit because the reason why I knew that Musty would be able to do this was I was preparing for uh for my pitch to Walmart. Actually, I was putting together my pitch deck for Walmart. And you know, and it was certain criteria they asked for, like your elevator pitch is one of them and you know, I'm a creative, not a creative writer. I am a visual creative type of person, right? And so I sat down with uh, with both with my with these are my two my two besties, right? Mostly and my girlfriend from the, from grade school, who's always written for me, and we're putting this thing together, and it's coming. And um, and so most of us like, okay, well, let's do this, this, and this. And I was like, oh, okay, I think. Yeah, this actually works. It works. So between the two of them, we pulled together. But it was there that I re- I knew mostly was a writer. But I was like, wow, there's magic. Mm. There's magic in this writing. Like my bestie, I mean, she's a, a phenomenal writer as well. But it was just, it was. I think that creative part that mostly is is does every day, all day, is that piece that was like, and she did it quick. Mm-hmm. Right. That was the other thing. Like she did it like really quick. And so I'm like, oh, my God, like I have these two amazing people that are writing for me. But it was just something about mostly she just she just she understood. She understood what needed to get done quickly and she was able to execute it. And so I knew that when I called her, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to need you to pull this thing together for me. And I need it quick. And right. I need it to be really good. <laughs> So with with you launching this uh, commercial, what pressure, if any, did, um, and Barbara, I asked you this, and mostly I asked you this as well, uh, Barbara, what pressure did you feel to be competitive with other ads that may be coming out with huge budgets? Well, I had already, uh, well, the commercial had already been filmed, right? I didn't have a voiceover for the commercial. It was just being filmed. And I felt very comfortable. There was three commercials that I did because when the opportunity came came to me, the company said, well, you got to have a 30 second HD commercial ready to go now. And I'm like, I got three. So they said, send them over. And, and it was just, I'm telling you, like, I was just filming these commercials so that I can have something to put on YouTube and, you know, run my ads and things like that. So, uh, but it was just music. And, um, and I sent them the three ads and the one that they ended up picking was the one that I, I would have picked myself. Mm. And so I was just going to let it go with the music. And then I thought about it and I said, can I have some voiceover? Because I feel like there needs to be some explanation, something that is going to, again, be able to speak to the spirit of these pet owners. And so when they said, yeah, you can do that. And I first hired somebody from, from, from their you know, a camp to be able to do it. But it's like they don't know. They didn't know the brand. Like I felt like I've spoken to Moshi so many times about this brand. I've shown her so many pictures. She's made so many corrections on my packaging <laughs> with grammar. And I just felt like she just got it. She just understood it because I felt like she had been in the trenches with me. So it was, I, I felt like if I could put it out there and I can get the right language, we could push it out there. Honestly, I just, I prayed about it and I just let it go. I'm like, God, I'm putting it out there and I, this is the best I got right now. So yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need you to provide a, I'm, I'm like, Provide us the blessings that only you can do. Like, show us your miraculous miracles. <laughs> Mostly, so, so piggybacking off of that question, I have a question for you. Working in the industry and, um, and also working with Barbara, from what I'm hearing, one of the things that was so synergistic um, regarding this particular project was that there was relationship and there was knowing of the other person. Does that make a difference when you're working on a project and kind of producing what you produce? You know, interestingly enough, um, most of the time when you come into a room, you don't know the client, but you may be familiar. You try to familiarize yourself with the product and do the research ahead of time. 
but it is a it's a plus it's a serious plus when you know the person you have relationship with them you have an idea about their likes and their dislikes so you are it's almost like you don't have that handicap going into the room you know yeah. what i mean it's a very different situation you know um when you are when you're walking in with folks who are just like okay so this is what i want but cuz cuz here's the thing most people forget that it's a visual medium you know what i mean and so it's like and i always equate it like if you're going to get your hair done you don't walk into your hairstylist and say i want it to look like it should look like i think i want it to be because guess what exactly what it is in your head is not what you're going to walk out there with so i always say to people you need to come in with a photo you need to no. say this is what i want this is what I needed to look like. And so I say all that to say, it, I, it's similar to me in knowing the person because I already have the photo. So I already know what this looks like, what you want. When you're coming into a room with other people you don't know, it's like me walking in and saying, this is what I think I want. This is what I think I need. And then we're just like, we're going to throw a Hail Mary and hope it all works out. Unless you get someone in the room who, even though you don't know them, understands the concept of, oh, wait, we're talking visual medium here let me let me do a sketch even if it's stick figures let me Not show you let me figures. give you <laughs> stick figures <laughs> all right stick figures i'm like get me let me give you a reference point of something yeah. and so that's why usually even as long as we've had a relationship we will we will bounce commercials back and forth i'll be like oh my gosh i saw this because now here's the thing we were you know all set to go but then you know we saw this this commercial for this brand that shall remain remain nameless at the moment <laughs> and so we saw we saw this other commercial and we were like oh see this is the stuff dreams are made of but we were like oh yeah no we got to go back to the drawing board we got to scrap this because in the in the world of brands and advertising and marketing everybody's checking out what the competition is doing yeah. everybody's trying to you want to stay cutting edge you've got to stay ahead of the, the 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 curve you have to it's the difference between being good and great it just is yeah. you know and so sometimes if you know you have no choice but at the end of the day to just say are we really going to scrap this we are luckily though because you know barbara is a boutique firm you know at this a, a boutique company at this this you know moment the ability to be able to maneuver is very differently when you've got more cars in the wheel. Once yeah. her, you know, once her company is at the point where it is a lot of moving parts, it's going to get interesting to be like, how much of, we, we got how much riding on this? How much is this budget? You want us to cancel and scrap what? No, man, we need to have a conversation. You know what I mean? So it's versus us being right now, she we can just be like, we're gonna scrap it, and it's okay. There's no there's no system checks and balances. She is the checks and balances. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. I'm I will miss that. I will as she you know ascends. I will miss that component. We, we <laughs> it, 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 it's well. about planning. It's about really it's about planning, right? So we can say next commercial. This is the feeling next the commercial after that this is the feeling but the interesting thing is that you know i find that when i create these i don't even know what it is that i want but i know it when i see it mm -hmm. you know and it's hard for me to put that into words you know so that's why i need some you know creative person like mosi to be able to help me formulate those thoughts and she can not only write but she can also figure out okay so these are the visuals that we need to depict to make this all work together so tell us about the commercial. Where will the commercial be? What is the commercial for? And what are you expecting? So, um, so the commercial is uh, it's going to be for this opportunity that I mentioned before with this company that truly believes in what this brand could be and giving me an opportunity to be on on television. And so um, it's going to first show on uh, Recipe TV and um, uh, Dog TV. And it's actually, I'm running a commercial now. I'm actually running the commercial from the Puppy Bowl currently there, which is why our products are now sold out on Amazon. <laughs> um, and so we're going to continue that. Uh, you know, I, I made a commitment. I said, I'm going to try it for three months. I'm going to see how it really affects my sales. Because I could, they could introduce me to a larger platform that would get me on network television. But I gotta, you know, I have to be very succinct 
when I do that because it doesn't serve the brand if I don't have any product to sell. Sure. You know, so I have to I have to scale and I have to you know make sure. That's when I said the month of July I'm going to get a thousand product thousand you know bags of products in Amazon so that I can be able to move them when these commercials you know are launching. So um, with regards to the commercial itself, I really wanted to. And, and I, I, I think this is the one that we're going to work with where I really wanted to show a multiculturalism in, in the commercial. So I've got a lot of different ethnic groups, you know, who are with their dogs and, you know, and just um, we're putting together the story that that can help to to tell, you know, uh, how, how much love and care that goes into this brand and how much we care about, you know, dogs. And so. Mosi has a challenge of being able to write that text. <laughs> that um, yes, and, it's, and, and, it's, news and yeah, so yeah, and I'll, let, I'll let her take it which I really like. <laughs> <laughs> that, not to not to jump in, but I just wanted to add my little two cents and say, Wait, uh, please, you know, please, like the please, great please. thing. <laughs> the the great thing about this commercial um you know obviously we already we already have the footage um is the fact that this and i want to just kind of speak a little bit to obviously the climate and all that of course has gone on last year and this year and so this commercial is just really the way it's shot it's a beautiful array of of what the world uh should look like you know um and very all inclusive you know um and so i'm um, you know it's it's all all genders and all and all races and so it's it's such it's so beautifully filmed so i'm looking i can't wait for everyone to see this you know because i think that's the other thing too you know it's, it's time for a breath of fresh air at you know at no matter what the medium is or what product you're selling because i think we're all you know kind of tired of seeing these commercials that just have only just these people in it, you know, and not really showing what the world is, which is, you know, everyone together. We all breathe. We all have lungs and hearts. You know, the outside is the only thing that's different. But it, it, inside, we are all the same. We are all the same. And I think that that speaks to uh, the yeah. spirit of the entire brand and the intention behind it. You know, and I hear what you were saying, Barbara. You're like, I don't know what I want, but I know it when I see it. And from for me, that translates as, you know what, I have a feeling and I want whatever the production result is to mirror the feeling that I have inside. And yes. when I see something and it makes me feel like that's the vision, then that's the vision. There it is. I yes. feel it. Like my feelings are the destination. That's, that is correct. Yeah. That's exactly right. And I'll know it when I see it. And I, I usually get like a little choked up too because mostly sent me this this commercial the other day, and and I watched it and I was and I'm just like it just took my breath away. It was just it was it just left me like all like you know, you know, my eyes got a little glassy. <laughs> mostly, look at you just making people just speechless. <laughs> Listen, I, I, it's, it's funny. I saw this. I saw that commercial, and then that's when I said to her. So we need to do this. <laughs> we need to replicate this feeling. And I'm like, how? So how, how do we do this? <laughs> I was like, we're going to need to ditch everything that I, I did, and we're going to need to get this feeling. So, um, you know, in, in classic us style, you know, we're going to uh, have a meeting and get together. And usually our meetings, you know, are interesting because if it's winter time, it's around the fireplace. And if it's summertime, <laughs> it might be at the beach. And so, <laughs> you know, and so oh, we're going to get together. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So we're going to get together here and we're going to knock this, you know, new tech, new, new verbiage out for this commercial. And, you know, um, and really, you know, work at evoking some some serious uh, emotion out of it. We want it to be a real contender, and we want it. We want it to be the kind of thing that, you know, people do. You know, Webbies. You know, they 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 give Webby awards, and so we want it to be even a situation where someone's like, "Oh my gosh, did you see this commercial on the web? It's amazing!" And then poof, you get a Webby, and then the next thing you know, poof, you're on network TV. You know, it <laughs> it, it does still happen like that. It can happen. It, do, it, it does. Yeah. It can happen. 
It could definitely well, I'm happen. so excited that, um, that myself and our audience, we have a chance to hear the story behind what we're going to see. And okay, okay, well, listen, this is going to be my ask. So Barbara and Mosi, would you mind if when the commercial is done, can I air it on our show? Of course, you can be, you can air Absolutely. <laughs> you get the world premiere. You get Listen. The world premiere. <laughs> That is awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. And I'll let everybody out there know when it's going to be. But listen, one of the things, and I, I'm going to get away from the feelings really quick. Barbara, you said something that is super critical, um, crucial. Excuse, it wasn't critical, maybe to business. But you said that you alluded to that you wanted to make sure you scaled appropriately. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people miss that component. Yeah. A lot of people want to be out there and ready to go and ready to go, but they're not ready to go. Right. And in my mind, that was like the epitome of a good thing, but it's like, I'm doing too much right now. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. You, can literally, you can literally do too much if you're not very strategic and you don't have that business acumen to say, hey, let's move at a pace where we're actually going to be successful, not just launch and just see what happens. I love that you said that because a lot of people who are looking to be entrepreneurs or who may be entrepreneurs right now will, will hear that and say, hey, let me look and see where my business is. And if I grow today, the question then becomes, am I ready? Yeah, and it's funny, that's that's all of that is absolutely true. Um, because when I first started this business, I mean, I didn't know anything about it, right? So I mean I've I've used to I'm used to work working with large, you know, brands and you know, I don't do any I don't have anything to do with the scale. All I have to do is to create the best possible product that I can I can create and we put it out there on the market and hopefully some folks will like it enough to want to purchase it over and over again, right? But when I first started this brand, I didn't really know anything about it. And I just wanted to make sure I'm getting in front of the right people. So I just happened to uh, connect with someone on LinkedIn who who did buying, who, who, who was a um, buyer for a large dog brand, right? Store, retailer. And so she was like, oh my God, your packaging is amazing. I want this for the store. And I thought, okay, cool. And she gave me an order for 16000 bags of dog trees <laughs> when I first started. And I was like, wait, wait, I'm like, wait, I'm not ready for that. So I, I had to not, I couldn't fulfill that order. And, yeah. um, and, I, and but what it did, to, what it said to me was, well, Barb, you can't fulfill that order now, but can you fulfill that order six months from now or a year from now? And it really helped me to put together the components that need to be in place in order for me to scale to the, to the size that this, to, well, to scale to the number of products, that the, the quantity of product this company was asking for. And so yeah. I actually got, I now have all those things in place. And so yes. I feel comfortable, you know, taking on something of that magnitude. But in the beginning, oh my gosh, I'm like, Thank you, God, but you know I wasn't ready for that one. <laughs> God's up there like, you're doing too much. You're doing too much. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, with yeah, every okay. company, I mean, for a great startup, you got to look at scalability because that's how you're going to grow. You know, how are you going to go from being a $100,000 brand this year to being a $200,000 brand next year? Like, you have to understand how to scale yeah. and, and scale right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that. Barbara and Mosi, thank you for being here. You're welcome. Thank you for yeah. having us. Absolutely. I would not have it any other way. Lick You Silly Premium Pet Products. Thank you to Barbara. Thank you to Mosi. Uh, Lick You Silly Pet Products are the, um, the sponsor of YS Pride uh, this year of the contest YS Pets got pride and we look forward to world premiering this amazing commercial that's going to be coming your way um the takeaway today is dream big but dream carefully and have a strategy behind it the other takeaway is relationships matter okay. remember that in personal lives as well as business relationships matter so thank you guys for joining us and remember you are the best you in the world have a good day Don't